Today we're going to look at a father and a son who rejected him, but then embraced him again. Don't miss it. Stay tuned. I was done hoeing out in the fields for a day. I was thinking of going. I had to leave right away. My life was just fading. And though I felt so alone, the nearest young maiden was a full day's ride from home. Whoa, whoa. My father was reading the holy books in his room. My heart was just pleading. I knew I had to go soon. He smiled and pointed to an old wooden chair. I wanted to hold him, but then I just wouldn't dare. I said, Father, there's so much to know. There's a world of things to see, and I'm ready to go make a life for myself. So if you'll give me what is mine, I will go if I can have your blessing. But if you won't bless my journey, I'm going to leave anyway. Son, I've always tried my best for you. And if you must be leaving home, then go. With the blessing of God. Not too many days later, I was well on my way. I met a traveling stranger who seemed to have much to say. He told me tales of a city and all the women he'd had. I asked him, isn't that sinful? He said, no, it isn't that bad. Then a few days later, on an old city road, we were drowning in laughter. And we had women to hold And this went on quite a long time My father gave me a lot But when my pockets were empty, Lord, oh My friends all left me to rot Then a famine came and drained the land Everywhere I looked I saw starvation And a job was so hard to find I wandered through the city streets Competing for the food of common beggars Up till then I'd never known hunger But now I wasn't too proud
finally found some employment feeding pigs on a farm I wasn't treated too kindly Lord I had to sleep in the barn I had to eat with the swine the bread I ate was like stone it didn't take too much time until I was dreaming of home oh the servants there are better fed if I could only have what my father gives them I would truly need nothing more oh I will go and say to him I'm no longer worthy to be in your family would you take me as your servant and let me live with them? It didn't take too long to pack my things. I left with only what I wore and I prayed that I still had a I was near home inside of the house. My father just stared, dropped open his mouth. He ran up the road and fell to my feet and cried and cried. sinned and heaven's ashamed I'm no longer worthy to wear your name I've learned that my home is right where you are oh father take me robe put it on my son shoes for his feet hurry put them on this is my son who I thought had died prepare a feast for my son I prayed and prayed, never heard a sound. My son was lost. Oh, thank you, God, he's found. My son was dead and now alive. Prepare a feast for my son's love. My son was dead, my son was lost, my son's return in the hands of God.
Welcome to Follow Me, the online teaching ministry at Wayne Fleet BIC Church in Wayne Fleet, Ontario. And we're so glad that you join us each week or whenever you see this. We are so delighted to have you as a part of, uh, of this time. And we, we love to look at the teachings of Jesus. And this series is a special series of looking at the parables that Jesus told in a lot of his teaching, particularly later about the second half of his, of his teaching life, uh, for about a year and a half or so, he began incorporating parables in order to teach the points he was teaching. A parable is a short story that would illustrate the point that he was trying to make. And so we're gonna be looking at 10 parables over the course of the, of the next uh, several weeks. And so stay tuned. You're gonna learn some things about Jesus and you're gonna learn some things about the Heavenly Father that are told so beautifully. And today we look at the story of a, of a father's love scorned and ignored, but then finally, literally, uh, the father and son embraces. Uh, this is a beautiful story of the prodigal son. Maybe you've heard that term before in Luke chapter 15. And really, this short story illustrates our Heavenly Father's unconditional love that he has for us. Now in chapter 15 in Luke, this is actually the third story in the chapter. Um, the third story in, in uh, chapter 15, Jesus told uh, these great stories to a bunch of hard-hearted religious leaders. They just weren't getting it. And the first story was about a lost sheep. And the second story was about a woman who diligently was looking for a, a coin she had lost. And then the third story in that chapter is the prodigal son, a father welcoming his lost son. The story of the prodigal son is probably one of the best known stories that Jesus told. And as our drama uh, unfolds as we tell this story, it's really a beautiful uh, story of, of a young man who learns some pretty painful lessons, but his father is just so loving and understandable. And, and so it, it's going to illustrate the unconditional love of our Heavenly Father. So John, who was a disciple of Jesus, he ponders the love of God and he says in 1 John chapter 3, in verse 1, he says, See how very much our Father loves us, for he calls us his children. And that is what we are. It's a, that's a beautiful thing. And then the early church missionary, uh, Paul, uh, he declares over in Ephesians chapter 3, he says in verse 16, he begins, I pray that from his glorious unlimited resources, he will empower you with inner strength through his spirit. And then Christ will make his home in your hearts as you trust in him, your roots will grow uh, uh, down into God's love and keep you strong. And may you have the power to understand, as all God's people should, how wide, how long, how high, and how deep his love is. Wow, that is beautiful. Scripture reminds us that love is not just a characteristic of God, but that it is really rather his very essence. God is love. Not just that God loves, God is love. It's not natural for us to naturally embrace God's love. Uh, the brokenness in our lives tends to send us the other way. And it's been that way for a long time. Just go back and ask Adam and Eve. Uh, how well it's worked out for them to run from the embrace of God. But we see in this story that Jesus has the Father who is constantly looking for relationship to be restored. And that's the beautiful thing about this story. So we join this story at a point where the younger son, there's two sons, the younger son is rather impatient 
And, and so he desires all that he had coming, all the inheritance that was coming his way. He wanted it right now. The son knew under Jewish law that his dad could divide up his estate before his own death. Yet it had to hurt. It had to sting when the son asked for his inheritance before the dad had even died. Basically, <coughs> basically he was saying, I wish you were dead. That's what he was saying. The son valued stuff. He valued stuff over relationship. Can I remind you today that all stuff is temporary? It's just temporary. And we're gonna see this in our study today. The son thought that stuff would be more fulfilling than the relationship with his own dad. There's a Bible teacher by the name of Warren Wearsby, and he says this, we are always heading for trouble when we value things more than people, pleasure more than duty, and distant scenes more than the blessings of that we have right at home right now. Well, that's a good point. And so maybe we should stop and ask ourselves this question. What's your favorite thing in all the world? We all have one. And, and what does it mean to you? And, and would, you, would you actually trade uh, that thing for a relationship or would you trade a relationship for a thing? Whatever it is that comes to your mind. It's a good question for us to think through today. Uh, today. The son in our story was willing to trade his dad for stuff. Ouch. That, that had to hurt, right? So the son... Uh, made another decision that removed him even farther from his dad. And that is, later in the chapter, it says that after he got his inheritance, not many days later, the younger son gathered all that he had and he took a journey into a far country. And there he squandered his property in reckless living. Now, you think about that for a second. A dissatisfied heart leads to a disappointment in life and being disappointed in life. The, the, the young man uh, heads for a, a, a dangerous place in his heart and in his mind, and that's the far country. The far country, which is really more of a place in our heart and mind than it is a, a physical location. Uh, let me ask you, have you ever been to the far country? And was it what you hoped it would be? The far country is not uh, so much a geographical place as it is a heart attitude or, or maybe a spirit or, or maybe some type of um, maybe an attitude that, that's fixed on pleasing oneself and loving ourself instead of loving others or l allowing God's love. The far country is not a place we want to be at. It can be found late at night in front of a computer screen when everybody else is asleep. That can be the far country in your life, perhaps. Or the far country can be envy, jealousy that we have for another, wanting what they have or wanting to be just like that person. The far country can be a thought or, or it can be a, a, a place that we go to in our mind that maybe we think nobody else knows about. The things that we think about, the things that occupy us. The far country is anything that robs us of our affection, our loyalty, and our love for God who, who cares so much for us. You know, as one writer put it, uh, talking about the three stories that were in that chapter, the lost, coin, uh, the lost sheep, the lost coin, and then the lost son, uh, another writer put it this way. If the sheep was lost through foolishness and the coin was lost through carelessness, well, the son was lost because of willfulness. 
In, in other words, this was a conscious decision that the son made, choosing himself over others, choosing stuff over others. And the payback was not real sweet. It really did not turn out real well. The far country never lives up to the hype that it tries to sell us. It, it never fulfills, it never satisfies. One guy said it this way, all Satan's apples have worms. And I, I think that's a, a good way to think about it. So the son finds this out. And in verse 14 of, of Luke 15, it, he's sitting in a pig pen and he's thinking life through. And it goes something like this. When he had spent everything, a severe famine rose in the country and he began to be in need. He'd, he had used up all of his inheritance. And so the Bible says he went and hired himself out to um, one of the citizens of the country, a farmer, who sent him into the fields to feed the hogs. And, and he was longing to be fed with even the food that the pigs were getting because that was more than what he was getting. And those pods, those carob pods that they would give um, the, the hogs, it wasn't anything to write home about, but he was so hungry that even that looked good. And so it goes on to say the son, he couldn't grasp the father's love till he understood just how the far country was not best for him to flourish in. And, and it's never good for us. We'll never flourish in the far country. We'll never flourish as God intended us to. And, we're, and the good news is we're always welcome home. And that's what this young man realized in verse 17. It says he came to himself. That is, he woke up. He, he came to the realization, I don't have to eat pig food. I don't have to do this. I, I can go back to my father. And he, he continues to think this through. And the scripture says, how many of my father's hired servants have more than enough bread? But I perish here with hunger. I will arise and go to my father and I'll say to him, father, I've sinned against heaven. And before you, I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. Treat me as one of the hired servants. At least I'll have a roof over my head. At least I'll have food in my belly. The young man realized the far country had not lived up to its hype. But let me tell you, this is the great thing about the father. Verse 20, he arose and came to his father. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and felt compassion ran and embraced him and kissed him. This is the cool thing here. The son did not merely regret his decision. This is deeper than just regret. He was broken and he was drawn back to his father by, his, by the love that the father had for him. And, and he shows that while looking down the road, he didn't know his son would be there. He must have gone out to the road and looked down that road. You look down that road behind me here, it just goes on forever. And, and I can imagine that must have been a similar place where the, the father would come out and look down that long road. And finally, one day, he sees a speck off in the distance. And pretty soon, that gets bigger and bigger. And he realized it was his son and the compassion and the love that he had. Can I tell you? The Bible says that this father ran to his son. And I will tell you that Middle East culture, old men don't run. But I love this. He ran to his son. And, um, and, and the father had a compassion for him and a love for him. And so the son woke up. He says, I'll rise. I will go. I will say and so forth. The son meant business. He repented. I'm going to get up on my own two feet. I'm going to change my direction, and I'm heading toward the one who can change my life. Jesus was teaching us about our Heavenly Father's love. When I was a little kid, we used to sing uh, deep and wide, 
and and the the song was something like this deep and wide deep and wide there's a fountain flowing deep and wide deep and wide deep and wide there's a fountain flowing deep and wide the scripture tells us in ephesians that we have no idea how deep the heavenly father's love is for us or how wide the heavenly father's love for us or how tall the heavenly father's love is for us and we see in that beautiful moment where this father the compassion oozing out of him and love he runs and he embraces his son you know many think that repentance comes when god clobbers this over the head with a two by four but the apostle paul said something in romans chapter 2 in the in the new testament he he says that repentance and forgiveness happens when we realize god's goodness just like the son did with his dad i don't know where you are in your spiritual life i don't know where you are with any kind of relationship with God, maybe it used to be there, maybe you're exploring faith for the first time. Can I just tell you this? The Heavenly Father is crazy about you. The Heavenly Father loves you so much. And the Heavenly Father is like this earthly dad. He's in the road of your life with open arms. He's ready to welcome you home. He's, he's there rooting for you. He loves you and he extends grace. Now I want you to listen carefully at what I'm about to say. We're not saved by God's love. God loves the whole world, but we also know that the whole world is not going to be saved. No, rather we are saved by God's grace. And grace is basically love that pays a price. The price that's been paid for you and me is Jesus. When he died on the cross and he bore our sins upon himself, he took the responsibility for our brokenness, for our shame, for our sin. And that he loves us so much. He took that willingly upon himself. He died. He went into the, into the uh, tomb. He went into the grave and three days later he resurrected. That is the miracle that God performed through his son. And I will tell you right now, just as this dad showed grace through a banquet and he put a ring on the son's hand and he put sandals on him and fresh clothes and he welcomed the son home, not to be a hired hand, but to be a son again. That is the way God works in your life and my life. God saves us. He forgives us. He restores us. We are kids in his family by his grace. There's this passage, it says, for by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, lest any man should boast. We come home to the Father today. It is because he's provided a way for us to come home. And he is the roadway itself. And he is there in the roadway with open arms. And he wants us to come home to him. Doesn't that sound great today? Do you, do you sense that, that maybe I want to answer that call? I, I want to feel those arms around me. I want to know that I have God's uh, forgiveness, and that I have God's grace at work in my life. You don't have to wait any longer for that. You can come home and he's in the road waiting for you. He doesn't care about what you've done. He doesn't care about what you've said. He doesn't care about how you've lived. He doesn't care about the mistakes you've made. He cares about you. And he loves you. And just like our father in this story, your heavenly father is in the roadway of your life with his arms open. And man, how deep is the father's love for us. And I, I just want to urge you to reach out today. Drop me an email, pat at waynefleetbic.com. And man, I would, let's begin a conversation about coming home. Or maybe 
getting to know God for the first time in your life, let's talk about it. We're here for you. And man, that's a conversation we'll have anytime you're ready to have it. And I, I just want to remind you today, you are loved by God and he cares about you. I don't care what you've been taught in the past. He doesn't have a two by four waiting to clobber you. He has open arms if, if you're willing to run toward him. And if you're willing to open your arms, can I tell you right now, he will take you into his arms. You will know God's love. You will know his forgiveness and you'll know what a second or third or fourth or fifth chance looks like. That's who God is. And that is what our story is about today, that Jesus was telling these hard-hearted religious guys, they just didn't know God that way. But you and I can. And I encourage you and invite you to do that today. Thanks for being a part of Follow Me. We're so glad to have you. Glad you're along for the journey. Stay tuned as we look at nine more parables and we learn a lot about Jesus together. Take care until next time.